Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. Today's module will feature forage feeding strategies on a pasture-based system. Our learning objectives include comparing advantages and disadvantages of pasture-based uh, systems, to analyze uh, feeding strategies with pasture, and finally consider nutrient quality of the pastures and supplemental feeding programs. Basically, when we look at grazing dairy cattle, it includes both aspects and art, meaning you listen to what the cows are telling you, and then, of course, the science to understand what nutrients and what requirements are. And basically, you put those together on a pasture system, which is a little bit more challenging because you have less control over the pasture aspects of the feeding program. Advantages of pasture systems include uh, high-quality forages. No question, extremely high-quality forages, usually also high in sugar content. Of course, there's no harvesting cost because the cows are grazing on themselves. An uh, increase in cow comfort and usually an improvement in feet and legs with less uh, lameness seen in these cows on a system. And in many cases, it's a lower cost milk production system. Disadvantages include uh, a lack of physically effective fiber, especially if it's extremely high quality forages. Uh, numbers from New Zealand would suggest perhaps uh, 50% of the NDF may be functional, where in baled hay it is 92%. Ruined pHs under 5.5 is very common. In fact, in New Zealand, pasture-based only 5.2 with no supplemental grains, extremely low rumen pHs. The protein content of the dry matter can be extremely high with a lot of it being degradable. So as a result, we can see a loss of nitrogen from the cow. The trick, of course, is balancing it with carbohydrates. We have some sugars there, but we do not have a source of starch and other sources in the diet. And dry matter intake is going to be a potential limitation. We look at pasture intake from New Zealand. Their data would suggest cows graze per day six to nine hours, an average of about eight hours a day. Uh, under aggressive grazing, they'll take 60 to 65 bites per minute. And depending, again, how, how tough the pasture is, that relates to about 4.4 pounds of dry matter per hour. So you can see that if they're grazing eight hours, you're looking at about 36 pounds of dry matter. And, of course, it'll take about eight, 7 to 10 pounds of dry matter just to maintain the cow. Then she has to do her walking on top of that. One example to back into intake on pasture is to use 1.4% of the cow's body weight as forage NDF. Yes, it's only feed source. New Zealand uses 1.5%. So if you had a 1,300-pound Holstein cow, uh, if you take 1.4% express as a decimal, that's 18.2 pounds of NDF. If the NDF in my pasture is 40%, that would yield about 45 pounds of dry matter. So again, that's another way to, to get an idea of how much pasture may be consumed out there and does tie to quality. Pasture is not perfect. It has these following characteristics. We've touched on a few of them already. Low effective fiber. It's a very lush, uh, rapidly immature forage source growing out there. Can be as high as 30% crude protein with over 80% rumen degradable protein. It's low in rumen for animal carbohydrates. Therefore, it's a challenge to capture all that degraded uh, protein in the diet. We mentioned dry matter intakes are going to be low. Higher maintenance requirements by 10 to 50%, depending how far the cow has have to walk and what the topography is going to be and the concern about a stable rumen environment. So what does the cow tell us? So here are some cow signs of ration and balance. Rapid drops in milk yield. Remember, persistency dropping more than 8 or 9% a month would be reflective of a lack of potential energy and dry matter intake. Low milk components compared to breed averages may indicate a, a, a change in rumen function and a lack of energy. Loose fecal consistencies, again, may reflect rumen function. The burning of grass with urine reflects excessive nitrogen losses that are coming out in the urine being excreted by the cow. A delayed estrus and low fertility can reflect body condition score and energy status on cows, and low body condition scores reflect the energy status. So how do we make pastures then more perfect? Well, well it's a wonderful feed to start out with. Energetically, pastures can support 50 or 60 pounds of milk based on the dry matter intake. So the question is, how do I get more dry matter into these cows? We can do this by adding a concentrate source of energy. Could include some byproduct feeds, could include barley, could do some corn. But we got to be careful to avoid rumen acidosis. One of the major concerns from pasture is substitution, which means that, well, I, I feed a, a pound of concentrate. Uh, the cows eat uh, about a half a half a pound or six-tenths of a pound less pasture dry matter, and we lose that. But the answer is you've got to have enough stocking density so we utilize all the grass that's out there. But remember, when I do substitution, I gain some dry matter intake, which is going to give me more energy and potentially more milk production, reproduction in those dairy cattle. So let's make it a little simpler. First, limiting nutrients on pasture. 
if Holstein cows are below 45 pounds of milk, probably there is no limiting nutrient. We should get 45 to 50 pounds of milk without, without any addition. If you want to go from 45 to 65 pounds of milk, you're going to have to add a source of energy, and usually that's going to be dry matter. We'll talk more about that through a partial mixed ration. If you're going to go over 65 pounds of milk, then both the energy sources and protein coming from rumen undegraded protein and amino acids will be important. Grain guidelines from Penn State. The thumb rule is about one pound of grain concentrate for every 45 pounds of milk after pasture nutrients have become limiting, which means probably around 50 pounds of milk. We would like to limit the amount of concentrates per meal to about five or six pounds to avoid rumen acidosis and rumen dysfunction. We want to vary the rate of starch and fiber digestibility in the rumen, and that's where some of the byproduct feeds can come in very, very nicely. Inner fats can increase energy intake when you're at the maximum amount of more economical sources of carbohydrates, such as starch and sugars, and still meeting our minimum fiber levels. And that's probably going to be in that 60-pound level. Every nutritionist and every dairy farm will have a slightly different trigger point. Our rumen undegraded protein responses are positive if the amino acids are first limiting in the feeding program, which really reflects higher milk production and higher milk protein. So my bias breaks down another way to look at levels of milk production you want to achieve. If you can economically survive on 13,000 pounds of milk from Holstein cows, the pasture will do the job. If you want to go to 17,000 pounds of milk, I'm suggesting I need about 20% of the dry matter as supplemental feed sources, ideally coming from a partial mixed ration. If you're going to 21,000 pounds of milk, then I would like to have 35% of the dry matter that I can build around the pasture. And then if I'm going to go up to over 23,000 pounds of milk, yes, you can get there with pasture-based systems, half the dry matter from pasture, the other half coming from supplemental feed sources. A quick word about PMR, perhaps a new term in your vocabulary, partial mixed ration, which means that it's going to provide some of the nutrients, some of the dry matter, depending on the level of milk production and the quality and availability of grass. The PMR should be able to maintain your current level of milk productions and hopefully improve reproductive success on the herd. Here's an example of 20 pounds of uh, of, uh, forage dry matter, 5 pounds of uh, corn dry matter, 3 pounds of soy oil, a pound of RUP, and then a pound of mineral salt buffer and additives. And that adds up to about 30 pounds of dry matter. So again, that would leave you room for about 20 pounds of pasture dry matter. You could actually take this PMR, reduce that level down to maybe 20 pounds or 15 pounds to make more space for pasture intake. Meeting the long forage requirements, the Wisconsin people suggest five pounds of long forage will maintain good rumen health. That can be defined as particles over three quarters of an inch or 18 millimeters in length. This is going to lead to about 550, 600 minutes of cud chewing per day. If you're using the rumen monitors, that'll be around over 450. By adding two pounds of straw or five pounds of quality forage per cow per day can meet this requirement. The thumb rule is a pound of straw functions much like about two and a half to three pounds of, say, a legume grass hay. Ideally, I would like to feed this long forage about one hour before the cows are exposed to the pasture. And ideally, that would be through the partial mixed ration fed before the cows go in the milking parlor. So when they leave the parlor, they go directly to pasture and consume nutrients from that source and reduces the selective feeding. Supplemental forage choices, uh, a number of them are listed here. Hay, an excellent source of physically effective fiber. And of course, I don't need a lot of uh, extra protein there. Straw can be a functional one because it is very effective in NDF and it slows the rate of passage, which may affect uh, the uh, manure consistency favorably. Small grain forages, pops up on some farms. This could be triticale or wheat, barley silage, and this can be used as an alternate forage source, sometimes used to establish the pasture or in double crop systems in parts of the world. Corn silage is my ideal supplemental forage source because it brings to the party some uh, fermentable starch and carbohydrates and not a lot of protein. So it kind of matches up very nicely with high quality pasture. Turnips and swedes can be another forage source that can be used in cooler periods or into the winter feeding program. Corn silage, we already mentioned its advantages. I'll let you read those. We already talked them through very nicely. To me, it's my number one choice I would add to a pasture-based feeding systems. Byproducts are another uh, good choice in my books uh, because many parts uh, of the world and the United States, they are very economical. 
And so I'm looking at an adjustable fiber source to balance the pasture nutrients. Such products such as beet pulp, soy hull, citrus pulp can be very, very beneficial. And especially because uh, when they are fermented, as you'll see down in rumen fermentation, uh, they usually result in acetic acid, not propionic acid. And propionic acid is the acid that can favor the lactic acid accumulation and shifting in the rumen pH. And again, three to five pounds of these products can be a pretty nice benchmark to come into this type of a system. Feed additives, pretty well makes sense. Rumen buffers, trying to keep the rumen pH over that uh, 5.8 if I can. 150, 250 grams uh, uh, per cow per day might be a guideline. Magnesium oxide is an excellent uh, additive for two reasons. First, it's a rumen alkalizer, and then it's a magnesium source to balance off the high potassium levels to avoid some of the grass tetany relationships that we pop up there. Typically, that 50 to 70 gram level will get you where you want to be. Monenzin uh, is uh, used in a number of countries to control bloat, uh, especially if it's approved, besides its effects on feed efficiency. And, of course, yeast culture, yeast products can stabilize the rumen pH and uh, they uh, stimulate the fiber digesting bacteria, and the levels vary depends on the type of products being fed. Additional feed considerations, providing uh, new pasture or paddocks every 12 hours, it makes it a very intensive type system by adjusting paddocks or wires or adjusting cow numbers to achieve the desired height. More about that in uh, in other discussions. Feeding a PMR, I think, is a great approach, especially if you feed it before milking. Usually cows will quickly consume this in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, then walk into the milking parlor, be milked, and moved out to the pasture. I've seen a few situations where the person where the land is flat and there's not a lot of trees or rocks, they will actually cut the pasture paddock ahead of the next feeding. That allows the grass to wilt down. Uh, it is already pre-cut, so the cows do not have to rip the grass. In fact, you can, if you listen carefully, you can. Cows are heavily forged. You hear them ripping the grass. Uh, you'll get greater dry matter intakes here, and of course, we'll reduce the weed seed uh, formation in the paddock itself. Take-home messages: Managed pasture can be an excellent forage resource on dairy farms. We must recognize that our pasture is not nutritionally balanced, especially at the higher levels of milk production where the industry is going. And supplemental nutrients are going to be needed for cows producing over 60 pounds of milk if they're Holstein cows. Thanks. Have a great day.